Welcome back to Celeb Memorial TV. Here, we celebrate the legacies of stars who shone brightly in our lives. Join us as we honor their journeys and the lasting impact they made. Before we start, to support us, please hit that like button. Thank you. John McBride, who passed away at the age of 80 on August 7th, was an American astronaut, naval officer, and test pilot whose career exemplified dedication, courage, and innovation. Born on August 14, 1943, in Charleston, West Virginia, McBride's journey to the stars began with his service in the United States Navy. As a naval aviator, he flew 64 combat missions during the Vietnam War, showcasing his bravery and skill. His naval career was marked by excellence, culminating in his retirement as a captain in 1989. McBride's expertise extended to aeronautical engineering, earning a Bachelor of Science degree from the U.S. Naval Postgraduate School. In 1978, McBride was selected by NASA as an astronaut candidate, a role that allowed him to leave an indelible mark on space exploration. He piloted the STS-41G mission aboard the Orbiter Challenger in 1984, a pioneering mission that included the deployment of the Earth Radiation Budget Satellite and groundbreaking scientific observations. His contributions to NASA's missions were multifaceted, including roles as a lead chase pilot, capsule communicator, and flight data file manager. He was slated to command the STS-61E mission, but it was deferred following the Challenger disaster. McBride's post-NASA career was equally distinguished. He served as an assistant administrator for congressional relations at NASA headquarters, fostering vital communication between NASA and the United States Congress. He later transitioned to a business career, holding executive positions and advocating for the construction industry in West Virginia. His legacy extended to education and public engagement. The NASA Independent Verification and Validation Facility in Fairmont, West Virginia, honored him by naming a software laboratory after him, reflecting his enduring impact on NASA's mission-critical software testing and research. In his later years, McBride remained a beloved figure at the Kennedy Space Center, participating in educational programs and sharing his experiences with the public. His passion for space exploration never waned, as he continued to support initiatives that inspired future generations. John McBride's life was a testament to the spirit of exploration and service. His contributions to aviation, space exploration, and his community will be remembered as a beacon of inspiration for all who strive to reach beyond the stars. Elizabeth McRae, who passed away at the age of 88, was an American actress whose career spanned three decades, captivating audiences on both the big and small screens. Born in Columbia, South Carolina in 1936, McRae grew up in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Her early years were marked by a passion for the arts, nurtured by her family. After completing her education at Holton Arms, a prestigious college preparatory school for girls in Washington, D.C., she pursued acting with determination. Despite initial setbacks, including a missed opportunity in Otto Preminger's production St. Joan, McRae's resolve only grew stronger. She moved to New York City, studying under the renowned Uta Hagen at the Herbert Berghoff Studio and honing her craft in off-Broadway and summer stock productions. McRae's acting career took off in the late 1950s, leading to a plethora of roles in television series and feature films. She became a household name with her recurring role as Lou Ann Poovey on the beloved sitcom Gomer Pyle USMC from 1966 to 1969. Her southern charm and endearing performance made Lou Ann a memorable character, beloved by fans. McRae's versatility shone through as she took on diverse roles in series such as Gunsmoke, The Andy Griffith Show, I Dream of Jeannie, and Hawaiian Eye. Her film career, though less extensive than her television work, included notable performances in movies like The Incredible Mr. Limpet and Francis Ford Coppola's acclaimed The Conversation. McRae's role in The Conversation drew critical acclaim and highlighted her talent on the silver screen. Beyond her acting, McRae was a talented artist, creating portraits that earned her commissions and sustained her during her early career. Her artistic abilities and dedication to her craft were evident in every role she took on, she retired with her husband, Charles Day Halsey Jr. in North Carolina, where she remained active in the community, sharing her wealth of experience with aspiring actors and participating in local theater productions. Elizabeth McRae's legacy is one of talent, resilience, and kindness. 
Her contributions to television, film, and her community will be remembered and cherished by all who had the pleasure of witnessing her work and benefiting from her generosity. Lou Dobbs, who passed away at the age of 78, was a prominent American conservative political commentator, author, and television host, known for his passionate and often polarizing viewpoints. Born on September 24, 1945, in Childress, Texas, Dobbs's journey in journalism began with CNN at its inception in 1980. As the host of Moneyline, which later became Lou Dobbs Tonight, he established himself as a leading voice in business news. His tenure at CNN was marked by his incisive analysis and strong opinions, earning him both acclaim and criticism. Dobbs's career was characterized by his unwavering commitment to his beliefs. He was a vocal critic of illegal immigration and trade policies, which he argued were detrimental to American workers. His advocacy for these issues resonated with many viewers, particularly those who felt marginalized by globalization. This advocacy continued during his time at Fox Business Network, where he hosted Lou Dobbs Tonight from 2011 until its cancellation in 2021. Despite controversies, including his promotion of the birther conspiracy and his staunch support for Donald Trump, Dobbs maintained a loyal following. His career wasn't without legal challenges. He was named in defamation lawsuits related to his coverage of the 2020 presidential election. Nevertheless, Dobbs remained a steadfast figure in conservative media, hosting The Great America Show on iHeartRadio and his website until his death. Beyond his professional life, Dobbs's early years were marked by resilience. After his father's business failed, his family moved to Idaho, where he later attended Harvard University, graduating with a degree in economics. His diverse career included stints in law enforcement reporting and banking before he found his calling in journalism. Dobbs's personal life was also significant. He married Debbie Lee Segura, a former CNN sports anchor, and together they raised four children. His dedication to his family and his work left a lasting impact on those who knew him. Lou Dobbs's legacy is one of a passionate advocate for his beliefs, a prominent media personality who influenced the political discourse in America. His contributions to journalism and his fervent support for his viewpoints will be remembered by many. Francine Pascal, who passed away at the age of 92, was an influential American author whose literary contributions left an indelible mark on young adult fiction. Born Francine Paula Rubin on May 13, 1932, in Manhattan, New York, Pascal grew up in Jamaica, Queens, and pursued journalism at New York University. Her early career saw her writing for prominent magazines like Cosmopolitan and Ladies' Home Journal. Her journalistic foundation provided her with the skills that would later define her storytelling prowess. Pascal's writing career took a significant turn when she co-wrote for the soap opera The Young Marrieds with her husband, John Pascal. Although they left the show to stay in New York, this experience sparked her interest in serialized storytelling, a passion that would later culminate in her most famous work, the Sweet Valley series. The Sweet Valley High series, launched in the 1980s, became a cultural phenomenon. Set in the fictional town of Sweet Valley, California, the series followed the lives of twin sisters Jessica and Elizabeth Wakefield. Pascal's keen understanding of teenage experiences and emotions resonated deeply with readers, making the series a staple for young adults. The success of Sweet Valley High led to numerous spin-offs, including The Unicorn Club and Sweet Valley University, and even a television adaptation. Pascal's creation extended its influence well into the 21st century, with titles re-released to capture new generations of readers. Apart from Sweet Valley, Pascal authored other notable works, including the Fearless series and Save Johanna. Her novel, If Wishes Were Horses, inspired by her own experiences of love and loss, provided a poignant glimpse into her personal life, reflecting her ability to weave personal narratives into compelling fiction. Francine Pascal's legacy extends beyond her prolific writing. She was a pioneer in young adult literature, creating relatable and enduring characters that have entertained and inspired countless readers. Her books offered not only escapism, but also valuable life lessons, making her a beloved figure in the literary world. Pascal is survived by her children from her first marriage. Her daughter, Jamie Stewart Carmen, a producer for NBC, predeceased her in 2008. 
Francine Pascal's remarkable ability to capture the complexities of teenage life in her stories ensures that her legacy will continue to live on in the hearts of readers for generations to come. Sandy Bresler, who passed away at the age of 87, was a legendary talent agent whose six-decade-long career was marked by dedication, innovation, and a profound impact on the entertainment industry. Bresler's journey began in 1960 as a secretary at William Morris, where his passion and talent for talent representation quickly became evident. He soon moved to ICM before co-founding Bresler, Wolf, Coda, and Livingston, which eventually became the renowned Artists Agency. In 1983, he established Bresler, Kelly, and Associates with John Kelly, an independent boutique agency that set new standards for personalized talent management. One of Bresler's most notable clients was Jack Nicholson, who remained under his representation for over 60 years. Their enduring professional relationship was a testament to Bresler's unwavering loyalty and exceptional ability to nurture and guide his clients. When Nicholson received the prestigious Cecil B. DeMille Award at the Golden Globes in 1999, he humorously acknowledged Bresler's steadfast support and guidance, highlighting the deep bond they shared. Bresler's influence extended beyond his work with individual clients. He was a significant figure in the broader talent agency community, serving on the board of the Association of Talent Agents, ATA, for nearly three decades and presiding as its president for over 10 years. His visionary leadership and commitment to advancing the interests of talent agents helped transform the ATA into a more influential and far-reaching organization. Karen Stewart, ATA's executive director, praised Bressler for his unparalleled dedication and the lasting impact of his mentorship and leadership. Bressler's contributions to the entertainment industry were recognized by his lifelong membership in the Motion Picture Academy. His work not only elevated the careers of his clients, but also helped shape the talent agency profession itself. Sandy Bresler is survived by his wife of 58 years, Nancy, his son Eric, his daughter Jennifer Galperson, and his twin grandsons, Brandon and Jonah Galperson. His legacy of dedication, integrity, and visionary leadership will continue to inspire and influence the industry for years to come. Robert Banas, who passed away at the age of 90 on July 29th, was an American dancer, actor, choreographer, and dance coach whose passion for dance left an enduring legacy in the entertainment industry. Born with an innate love for music and movement, Banas began dancing at the tender age of five. He vividly recalled standing in doorways, pretending they were stages, and dancing to the vibrant beats of big bands like those of Tommy Dorsey and Count Basie. His childhood was marked by an unstoppable urge to move, a trait that would define his life and career. During World War II, his family moved to McKeesport, Pennsylvania, where his father worked as a military chief inspector and his mother as a propeller inspector. It was during this time that Banas's father arranged for ballroom dance lessons for him and his sister Faith, igniting a lifelong passion. His early dance training at the Michael Panayev Children's Ballet Company, where he danced alongside Natalie Wood, Jill St. John, and Stephanie Powers, laid the foundation for his future in dance and performance. Banas' career took off when he was cast in the production of Carousel at the LA Civic Light Opera. This opportunity opened doors to numerous stage productions, including Kiss Me Kate, Annie Get Your Gun, Brigadoon, Plain and Fancy, and Peter Pan. His film career was equally impressive, with memorable roles in classics such as West Side Story, Bye Bye Birdie, The Unsinkable Molly Brown, and Mary Poppins, where he delighted audiences as a chimney sweep. He also shared a screen kiss with Marilyn Monroe in Let's Make Love and made notable television appearances, including an episode of Get Smart. Later in his career, Banas transitioned to choreography and dance coaching, sharing his expertise with the next generation of dancers in Los Angeles. One of his standout choreographic achievements was the dance for the Shirley Ellis song, The Nitty Gritty, performed on The Judy Garland Show in 1964. This performance found renewed fame on YouTube, amassing millions of views and captivating audiences decades later. Robert Bannis's life was a testament to his unwavering dedication to the art of dance. His contributions to stage and screen as well as his mentorship to countless dancers, will be remembered and cherished. He is survived by his legacy of passion, creativity, and an enduring love for dance that continues to inspire. Breaking news. 
News 1. Fans of Good Morning America were left wondering about the absence of co-anchor Robin Roberts. The beloved host returned the following day, sporting a cast on her arm, and quickly addressed the questions surrounding her brief disappearance. On Tuesday's show, Roberts lightheartedly joked with co-anchor George Stephanopoulos about her injury, revealing she had broken her wrist while playing tennis over the weekend. She also posted a video on Instagram, showing her cast and humorously remarking, Ah, you oughta see the other guy, why I oughta, while mimicking a boxing motion. Roberts explained, I actually took a little tumble on the tennis court and fractured my wrist. All my years being a competitive athlete, my first fracture and hopefully my last one, as well. Despite the injury, Roberts remained active in her professional duties. She conducted a pre-recorded interview with Phoenix Mercury star Brittany Griner about Griner's imprisonment in Russia, which aired on 2020 on May 1st. Roberts has been candid about her health struggles in the past. She underwent chemotherapy for breast cancer in 2007 and was diagnosed with a bone marrow disease in 2012. Her resilience and openness continue to inspire her audience. As Roberts navigates her recovery, fans are reminded of her unwavering spirit and dedication to her role on Good Morning America. News 2. In a heart-wrenching turn of events, an athlete died on Thursday during a swimming competition at a Texas lake on the first day of the CrossFit Games. The athlete was identified as Lazar Dukic, 28, a native of Serbia, according to records from the Tarrant County Medical Examiner's Office. As of Thursday afternoon, the cause of death remained unlisted. Fort Worth police were alerted just before 7 a.m. about a competitor who had been seen in the water but did not resurface. Despite swift rescue efforts, Dukic was pronounced dead at the scene. Our hearts are with Lazar's entire family, friends, and fellow athletes, CrossFit Games expressed on X. Out of respect for the family and in cooperation with the Fort Worth Police Department, we will share updates when possible. The incident occurred during the 800-meter swimming portion at Marine Creek Lake, following a 3.5-mile run. The remainder of Thursday's events were canceled, with organizers reassessing the schedule for the competition's subsequent days. CrossFit CEO Don Fall conveyed his deep sorrow during a news conference, emphasizing the extensive planning and safety measures involved in the Games. We are doing everything in our power during this tragic time to support the family and our community, he said. Authorities, including the Fort Worth Fire Department and police homicide detectives, were involved in the recovery and investigation. Dukic's body was retrieved from the water just over an hour after the first diver was deployed. Tributes have poured in for Dukic, with the Phytade Performance Energy Drink brand describing him as a beloved member of our team and like family over these years. A GoFundMe fundraiser has been set up to support his family, 